Ooh, cough squad. <coughs> oh, this weather is killing me. Hey all y'all and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a video that was requested probably a long time ago because I'm terrible at this. But one of you all was like, I think it was in one of my monthly favorites, one of you was all like, you should, you should go back and revisit some of your old favorites and like talk about them in a video and be like, you know, I used to love this. What are your thoughts now? Because as times have changed, you know, brand loyalties have shifted, you know, other formulas have been found, more affordable options, you know, as much as the makeup world is chilling things to it, at least it is also changing and shifting and evolving. Evolving into a hot mess, but I digress. So I'm going to be talking about products that back in the day, back in the day, for all y'all who have been with me from the beginning, products that I loved were my holy grails that I just absolutely, mm. I'm going to talk about my opinions on them today. And probably a lot of them are going to suffer from the simple fact that, you know, there are better formulas out there now. And also the fact that, you know, back in the day, you know, as much as we, you know, we have so much palette diversity now. So something that would have been groundbreaking then compared to what we have now is kind of like, so we're going to start off with one very, very big favorite, and that is the Kat Von D Shade and Light um, Eye Palette. This bad boy right here. Now, I purchased this in the height of Kat Von D. I mean, I feel like the height of Kat Von D was a couple years ago. And this was so the concept of, like, contouring your eyes eye socket and the whole like taking it from your face to your eyeballs was very revolutionary and very just well received. The fact that you had like, you know, your neutral, your cool, and your warm quads, that was absolutely amazing. The format in which she presented the palette, your three most used shades are gonna be right up here in a bigger pan. This thing had a lot going for it. And back in the day, I loved it. And in all honestly, I mostly do still love it. Do I think it's the best neutral palette that ever existed? No, that's probably gonna be, um, in my opinion, Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam. But if you are wanting that all matte inclusatory going on contouring the face, this is Something that I reach for anytime I do my vampire or my gothic Lolita kind of dead sunken in eye socket look. This has been a very tried and true companion in my collection. However, one problem with it is the fact that um, it was repackaged into um, plastic and the formula changed. I can attest to the fact that the formula is different and not in a good way. Will I continue using this thing? until I've panned it all out or until the pigmentation piffs off my eyelid? Yes, I'm sure I will. Is it a palette that you need now that you can only get from Kat Von D? Absolutely not. Y'all could go on to ColourPop and make the exact same thing for a lot less money. And I love ColourPop shadows more than her formula. Aghast, I know, I'm saying it, but I'm just being honest with y'all. Then another one that's probably gonna have y'all be like, who are you and what have you done with this YouTuber? Because back in the day, oh my goodness, I shilled this so hard. This was a product that I was like, if you get anything in your life, get this. The Too Faced Sweet Peach Palette. And this, my friends, was the palette of my ever-loving dreams. This was the palette, like I said, I would always recommend it. I'm like, this was in my top five favorite palettes, which if you know now, it didn't make the cut when I even talked about my top 10 favorite palettes. Not that it's bad, um, not that it, um, doesn't give me all sorts of feels still, but this palette is something that I look at and in my realization now and in how I do my makeup now, I'm not the biggest fan of Too Faced's formula, which is Funny, considering how many of their palettes are investing retail space in my collection. And I admit, back in the day, Just Peachy, um, Candied Peach, Bellini, and Bless Her Heart. Mmm. Mmm. 
dang, those were my jam. I wore those all the dang, dang time. But as I said, as my makeup whateverness has progressed, this just doesn't offer me nearly as much as I feel it did back then. And back then, my makeup technique was, you know, more doing one or two shade looks and we'd put a shimmer and a whatever. It wasn't as cute and as well curated as it is now. Am I gonna repurchase this? I uh, probably not. Like the other, am I gonna use it until it absolutely completely dies? Yeah, but looking at like today's standards of like makeup, makeup that I own and eyeshadow palettes that I love, it just isn't as up there. We might as well get the peach themes, themed products out of the way. Um, when they released that and then they made it permanent, they're like, what do people need with their palette? They need a peach face palette. And now this is definitely not a all inclusive palette because they're like, this is a shimmery bronzer and it's a shimmery bronzer for someone whose complexion is the color of snow. Like even on me, it comes off as kind of a faint little pfft of orangey shimmeriness. But when this came out, um, I feel like I was sort of brainwashed by the peach. And so everything that came out that was peach themed, I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's an extension. It's a family member of my beloved sweet peach palette. Obviously it's amazing, which in all reality is not the case. And this is Okay. I mean, back then I was like, this is the bee's knees. This is the most fantastic face palette you're ever gonna have. And other people were like, you know, it's not that pigmented. It doesn't show up really well. And I'm like, Psh, y'all ain't knowing what you talk about. And now I'm just like, yeah, yeah, you right. It's like, you know, it's pretty. You got like the highlighter, you know, it's like kind of a little something, something, this blush. This blush is like hard pressed and you gotta do a lot to get it showing up even on my pasty pasty cheekies. And like I said, the bronzer is just like a eh, just a little faint diffused orangey um, horribleness. I honestly don't know why I still have this in my collection. Probably because I occasionally make the highlighter work and I occasionally make the blush work, but like What's the point if you're like making it work, if you have to work towards it when you got other things in your collection that do it without being asked? I'm sorry that I was so blinded by everything peach and the fact that it does smell divine. But nowadays this is just kind of like, yeah, I'm honestly surprised this is still on the market. Has any of y'all seen this at like Marshalls or TJ Maxx? Cause that's kind of my opinion on this now. Then something else that was a more recent favorite, and I honestly think that it was in a uh, monthly hits and misses. And I was like, this is good. This is great. I like this. And then reality set in and I realized no, I'm, I'm not sure why I thought it was good. Maybe, maybe I hadn't used it long enough, but the ColourPop concealer, um, like I said, considering the fact that I put this thing on my face and I liked it, I, I'm, I'm not sure what made me not realize it wasn't the best right off. Potentially because I wasn't using a lot of mascara, mascara, concealers at the time, so I didn't have a lot to compare it to, but then going into another favorite that was an old favorite back in the day, the Tarte Shape Tape. Like I'd been using ColourPop and I was like, yes, my, my concealer game is banging. It's amazing. It's awesome. And then I put the shape tape on. I'm like, I've been lied to. I've been lying to myself. My concealer game is a lie because the Tarte Shape Tape was so smooth and amazing and it blended perfectly into my skin looked smooth and airbrushed and then I went back to the ColourPop and I was like, oh, so this is basically spackle. But not the good kind of spackle as in conceal and hide all your dark secrets, but the bad kind of spackle that clings to my no longer 16 under eye bags and then dries and flakes out. So I guess less like spackle and more like a fresco painting. Then one, we'll, we'll go with complexion. This is, this is, Y'all are gonna like, this is, this is some kind of like inception level shiz, I feel. I bought that foundation. This is the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. Did I say that already? I don't know. My mind is adrift. But anyway, 
I finally caved. I bought that foundation because everybody, everybody absolutely loved this shiz. They were just like, yes, this is amazing. It looks like my face, but better. And I'm like, really? Really? I would love to have my face look better than this. And so I bought it and I tried it and I absolutely hated it. It was thick. It was cakey. It like showed every, just every imperfect, made my whole face look like a giant imperfection. I just hated it. I hated it beyond absolutely anything and everything. Then I started taking care of my skin because if y'all know, you know, when with some of these products, when I was, I was like, I don't need skincare. My skincare is fine. When in reality, my skin was indeed not fine. So I started taking care of my skin and I don't know, I'm not sure what possessed me, probably because I was like, you know what, I paid for this shiz, let me use it up. And so I pulled it out and I put it on and I loved it. Oh my stars. I'm like, this is the creamiest, most amazing, beautiful matte foundation I have ever tried in my life. So I wasn't sure if it was because my skincare was better, my skincare routine, so my skin was better. If I didn't know how to apply my foundation back in the day, I wasn't sure what happened, but it was, it, it became, I talked about it and it hits and misses like, I used to hate this, I love it now. Then enter 2019. I took this foundation with me to Tennessee to use up, put it on my face and was like, what happened? It had returned to looking all things awful and cakey and once again every line every pore every single everything it showed and magnified about 10 times i was like what happened what happened i used the same primer my skincare routine hadn't changed the only thing i can think is maybe the foundation went off because i'm pretty sure i'd had it for for more than the than the recommend recommended possession time and i just haven't had it in me to like i'm gonna go out and buy a new one because i'm like i have twelve thousand other foundations i'm not gonna spend $42 on a new one that I don't know if it's gonna work or not. But that one was kind of sad because I hated it and then I loved it and then we're back to being like, why, why, why did you do this to me? Then something else. This one hurts a little bit, although it's only, it's, it's only half of what, it, Ciate Glitter Flips. Y'all know how I feel about the fluffy applicators. The applicators are just like, boing. They are beyond fluffy and it is super difficult for you to get that nice, fine, precise line on your lippies. And when I first got these, I was like, they're all amazing. They're all fan-tucking-fastic. You know, kind of drinking the Kool-Aid a little bit there. And the matte ones, I still love. Those ones are fine. It's a nice matte formula. You go, mwah, and glitter. It's all amazing. But they're metallic ones. Oh my goodness, like, like, I don't, I don't know what it is. First off, the formula is thick. It is thick and it is chunky. Kind of how I like my women. And so you, you, you got the struggle of putting it on because you're like, oh my goodness. Because it's the type of thing where like you put it on and then if you're going to put more on, it just, just kind of moves it around with it. Like you're not getting an even layer and it ain't, you know, you na it ain't getting any more opaque. So say you do get, you know, an even coat. Um... And then it dries, and then it seeps into the cracks of your lips, and that's where it goes to die. You put it on, it dries, you smile, and you have lipstick flakes all up in your teeth. Lipstick flakes all up in here. It was not a cute look. I mean, you go like this, and the glitter pops. Yeah, sure, but you're also removing half of the lipstick just from the friction of pressing your lips together. It's like, why? Why? What are you doing to me? You know? And it's not, I don't think it's a sick case of like them going off. I mean, it happened with multiple different colors. The worst was that hot pink magenta one though. And so you're like, okay, for an Instagram picture, if you're like, not gonna move, not gonna move your lips, then sure, it'd be fine. But for any sort of practical use, um, no. Huda Beauty Gemstone Palettes. I reviewed these when they came out. Let me, let me go get them. These little babies right here, y'all know how I feel about color. Y'all know how I feel about color-coded monochromaticness. So I love these. I thought these were a fantastic way for people who want to dip into color to get into color. We got purple going on here. Ooh. 
Ooh, purple and this green, yes, please. We got the red one, we got blue, we got green, and they're great. I like them. Um, but ColourPop has the same thing for like $12. I mean, you literally get the same amount of colors and they've got a green one, they've got two purple ones, a blue one, and a red one. And I'm sure somewhere they've got something to cover whatever the frig this is. So, do I still like them? Yes. Would I recommend them more than ColourPop? No. So, in all honesty, I do reach for the ColourPop ones more because ColourPop is one of my top three favorite formulas. And so, while these are great, and I still do love them, uh, ColourPop is better. Traditionally, ColourPop's matte to shimmer ratio is also a lot better in theirs, too. So, there is that. So, I do still love them, but, you know, in light of newer launches, they're just not as, not as loved. I mean, because, like, literally, I'm like, yeah, you know, I stand by my review. They're good, but I'm like, yeah, literally, I mean, ColourPop has the same thing. They may not be the same colors, but I'm like, if you want to get a green palette, get the Just My Luck palette. Get the watermelon. You know, it's a thing. All right, folks, that is all the time we have for that. If you're interested in seeing more installments of this, of me just revisiting products that I reviewed and loved, products that I talked about in my hits and misses, you know, you want to kind of, kind of see it. Excuse me. <coughs> but if you'd like to see kind of that glimpse and, and bringing up stuff, because it's good to talk about stuff that has existed for a while, because, you know, despite what Nervina has to say, we do get bored with that oversaturation. Like always, let me know what you think about what I talked about, and something that was an old favorite of yours that you either still love or, you know, kind of lost that flame, that, that intensity and passion. But... Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, and as always, keep it real. Mwah.